Welcome to Digital Asset News, taking top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we got some fantastic news coming from, surprise, surprise, the Federal Reserve Bank, as the president says Bitcoin is clearly a store of value. And he's going to talk about the distinction between a store of value as far as Bitcoin and central bank digital currencies. So we'll take a look at that on top of the fact that, hey, a use case for Dogecoin has been found, and surprise, surprise, it's for dogs. And uh, we're going to finish up just talking about a little uh, video I did a couple of days ago where I talked about Voyager and their updated user agreement and as far as 60-day withdrawals on top of some other things, just to make some clarifications. And uh, we'll go over all those things, but first, take a look what's going on in the markets. Today, it is uh, April 22nd, around 10 a.m. or so, and here's what we got in the market. So we're still hovering above the $2 trillion market cap. Seems like that is like a nice little line of uh, support as things just kind of hover above that. So I'm pretty happy. Bitcoin uh, still down 12% for seven days, 3% in 24 hours, but it's still almost at 55,000. So not too bad. Ethereum is the big winner today at 7% and their high market cap. And everything's all kind of all over the board. Uniswap's up 10%, Chainlink 6%, uh, but you got some other ones. Doge down 6%, eh. And 12% uh, for Solana Layer 2 Solution, 12% almost for Terra. And it's just all over the place. So I just want you to notice that for Trade the Chain, it takes a look at the sentiment and takes a look at all of a bunch of data that uh, is coming from Twitter. They are scraping the internet. They are scraping all the uh, exchanges, blog posts. And they kind of give us a sentiment of what's going on in the market, where people are kind of going. And long term, you'll see right here, again, bullish, 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 very bullish on most of the projects or neutral, except for die, bearish. But in the last day or hourly, it's a lot of neutral. I think people are just kind of like wondering, like, where are we going? What's going to happen? Well, if you're a day trader or an investor, there's uh, different uh, theories about that. But me personally, I still believe that uh, Bitcoin is going to go to 150K by the end of the year, not financial advice. I think that's where it's going to go. And we're going to see a big altcoin boom. Remember, uh, we're only in April and we got a long ways to go. Now, do I think that the uh, bull run will last all the way until February of 2022? Eh, not really. But uh, I do think that we got a lot of room to run. That's just my opinion. And then lastly, let's take a look at, uh, if you're a big trader, I am not. Uh, using Trade the Chain, let's take a look at sentiment analysis. We're going to click on that projected range. Let me blow this up so you can see it. And uh, if you're a trader, just look at, see that projected range where it says 5.49%, the very right side there? That's with 90% uh, assurance. That's where the price is going to go, which is up 5%. And uh, 3%, 3%, 2% below on the on the next four. So if you're a trader, look at uh, Digital Note, Litecoin, Travala, Qtum, Aragon, and Talos. And uh, that could be a big winner. Anyhow, that's what's going on there. Let's take a look what's going on in today's top story. But before we do that, I just want to say uh, thanks to sponsors and friends of the show. Uh, I trust. Uh, there's a little article that came out that I trust just passed 1 billion assets under management. They had uh, 300 million in the uh, in the first quarter of 2021. So now they are the largest uh, crypto IRA platform out there. And I've been using them. This will be my second year. Um, and I have no problems with them. I just put the money in there. Then it's going to be tax free as I take it out when I hit 59 and a half. I can also trade within my account uh, penalty free. There's no capital gains tax. Oh, and also uh, the Ethereum and Polkadot that I hold in there. And then also Cardano now uh, is that uh, it will actually, uh, the staking rewards that I get, because I'll be able to stake in quarter two. Uh, that means that uh, those will also be uh, tax and penalty free. And also, just so you know, uh, they use uh, the custody solution curve, which was just acquired by PayPal. So no slouches in that department. Everything's very safe. So if you have a uh, traditional IRA somewhere else, an old employer plan like a 401k, 403b, military TSB, if you're going to retire, then take a look at transferring over into crypto IRA. I'm not saying what to do, but I would definitely take a look at them. I've done that myself. Link is in the description and uh, viewers of the show uh, get uh, the first month for free. So that is iTrust. Congratulations, everybody over there. And let's take a look at what's going on with the Federal Reserve. So I thought this was interesting because uh, the Federal Reserve is not one to really come out and go, you know what, cryptocurrency, love it. Just fantastic stuff. But uh, here we are uh, for one of the Federal Reserve Bank presidents is going, you know what, it's definitely a store of value and we're researching it heavily. And that was the biggest point that they're researching it heavily. So this is uh, Robert Kaplan, Federal Reserve Bank president for Dallas. 
And he explained that he would distinguish between Bitcoin and central bank digital currencies or CBDCs. He goes, I would differentiate between a crypto like Bitcoin and the discussions that are being had about digital currency, such as the digital yuan. And he states, look, right now, Bitcoin is a clear store of value. And it makes a lot of sense to me. And I was talking to my friend Moad about this and uh, as far as like, what is a store of value? But he goes, but how can it be really a store of value? Because we value it in dollars. So wouldn't it just be dollars? And I go, yeah, kind of. But if you really think about it, it's not the dollars that we really care about. It's what we can buy with those dollars. So 10 years ago, one Bitcoin could buy you like a very expensive loaf of bread, right? And then of course, one dollar could get you that loaf of bread. And now 10 years later, uh, that same one Bitcoin can buy you a Tesla and that uh, and that bread doesn't cost you a dollar. It's actually going to be like a buck 50, buck 75, depending on where you go at. So it's all about the purchasing power of what you have. So do you want to store it in a dollars, which you can? Look, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. It's your choice. But I think uh, as far as a store of value, like artwork, like land, like gold and silver, and now Bitcoin, I think it could work itself out. Anyhow, he states, uh, the bank president says, it's obviously made a lot in value. That may keep it from spreading too far as a medium of exchange and wide adoption, but that can be uh, change it and that will evolve. And I think, I was thinking about this yesterday, actually, because you know we talk about technology and really Bitcoin is a technology. It's a new technology. And I feel like, and this is a very crude example. Don't you know say, I know, there's a difference between the Netscape Navigator and Bitcoin. Gotcha. But I'm just saying, and remember in the very beginning, actually, I'm going to use a better example. In the very beginning when Netflix came out, I don't know if you remember that because I'm old. I remember that. And uh, I was like, well, this would be awesome if I could just sit in my house and just you know stream stuff. That'd be great. I wouldn't have to go to Blockbuster and have to deal with all the crappy fees and everything else. And then uh, I remember people would tell me, that's not going to happen because have you tried to download a video? You know how hard it is to watch a video on the internet these days in 2001? It's very tough. Or 19, well, no, 1997, 1998 when the internet came about. Like it's impossible and uh, that'll never happen. Well, guess what? Works out pretty well and everybody's got it. So same thing, technology will catch up and uh, who knows, Bitcoin may have a layer two solution where people are using it for payments and whatnot. And Ethereum could actually get across from their gas fees because remember, we're very early, so we'll see. Uh, to finish up, the Fed Bank chief also confirmed that he and his team have studied intensely and will keep studying Bitcoin and other crypto. The discussions around the world on digital currencies are slightly different, and what a digital currency won't necessarily be a store of value. Digital currency, like the digital yuan, the digital dollar, those type of things. And he states, if you're worried about the value of underlying currency, digital currency is likely to be, for example, in China, tied to the value of the underlying asset. In this case, digital yuan is tied to the yuan. Digital dollar is tied to the dollar. That's it. It's also a way of ease of payment, domestic payments first, getting money to where it's needed. So again, central bank digital currencies, I think will probably go far because people will trust them. But in the end, I think as time really moves forward, we'll probably use a lot more uh, digital assets that are on uh, a distributed ledger and are decentralized. I could be wrong. That's my thoughts. Anyhow, let me just in the comment section. I thought it was, it was interesting that the big that the bank just comes on and goes, yep, store of value looks good. <laughs> Great. Because again, they don't care about store of value. They're about currency. And they're like, we are not competing in this arena. So if you want to do store of value, have at it, Bitcoin. We don't care. But we're going to take over uh, this currencies. And that's where the fight really is going to happen as far as the currencies, digital currency that could be that. All right, let's move on to our next piece. So use case for Doge. Uh, yesterday I said that Doge was trash. And uh, I mean, it's not trash. It has some, some functionality I and mean, it really does. I mean, you can tip people with it. You can do things, you can pay people with it. And it is fast, you know, uh, but there's a ton of those, those, those tokens. And uh, I just thought it was interesting. I don't think it's going to be a world reserve currency. Sorry, Dogecoin holders. I don't think it's going to a dollar either, but I didn't think it was going to go to 40 cents and I was wrong on that one. But I thought this was pretty cool because a donor anonymously paid the adoption feeds for 21 dogs at a Daytona Beach, Florida shelter on Saturday. So I'm like, man, 21 dogs, it's a thousand bucks. What are the fees? It's a lot. The donor dubbed Doge Community, one big using crypto Dogecoin and put a thousand bucks of those funds towards the adoption fees of dogs that were currently ready to be adopted from Halifax Humane Society. So great. And this is a... Of course, people are going to say, well, anything, any crypto can do that. Well, sure, they can. But I just like the whole article about, you know, like if you get, if you get a lot of money or, or you get, a, you know, a good prosper, 
uh, you'd actually you know give a little bit back and i i can appreciate that so i like the whole uh dogecoin use and and the story and again this just brings cryptocurrency and digital assets into the forefront of the public consciousness. And that's all I really care about. So people can get into our space. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that piece. And that is a great reminder for me as far as what I am supposed to do. And uh, as you know, let me just uh, come over here. Uh, over at uh, Dante's Crypto, this thing that's spinning above my head the whole time. It's a 100% free website. And if you go there, uh, there's a little on the very top, depending if you're on your mobile device or on a desktop, go to ADA Staking. We have a Cardano stake pool, doing pretty well so far. Uh, our uh, rewards, it's between four and 6%. We're uh, a little bit above the industry average. We're like at 5.12, I think, percent, and pretty stable. Everything's going pretty well. And uh, in this stake pool, we had vowed that we are going to give 100 ADA uh, every epic, which is every five days. Uh, and yes, it's called epic. That's what Charles Hoskinson calls it. So I don't want to hear in the comments section, you call it epoch. I have to say it every time. It's so annoying, but uh, whatever. Hopefully I can get it in everybody's brains that that's how he says it. Epic. I don't care. So uh, so with this one, we give uh, 100 ADA every five days, and I was a little bit behind, so I had to play catch up over at Kiva.org. Kiva.org is great because you, you're you not giving charity. You're giving loans to people, which in, case, uh, which in point, they actually do pay back over one to three years, and those loans will just keep giving those loans out over time. So I'm thinking over like you know one to five years, we can start giving massive loans as the money keeps coming back, and we just get, you know put it back to the community. I don't like giving straight to charity charities so much because you never really know and with this one, uh, this is um, was created by one of the founders of PayPal. Seems to be a good organization. And this uh, epic, we chose uh, the March 2 group, which helps uh, one energy system uh, in order to have access to solar power for lighting, changing and cooking. This is in uh, uh, Uganda. We also did uh, Servicios Multipales El Milagro, the miracle. A loan helped to pre-finance the sale of multiple containers of organic coffee uh, for 177 different farmers and Dove's March 1 group. Uh, this was uh, fighting and charging and cooking uh, for, and again in, in Uganda for the uh, solar power. So uh, total was 287 and then we gave a little bit of, of uh, processing fees. So that's what we do. If you want to follow us and actually give as well, because I think uh, this might be a great uh, year for a lot of people making a lot of money, Look in the description below. There's a link for uh, Kiva.org, and uh, you can start making donations or loans, micro loans to people who really need it, and they'll pay it back, and you can just keep loaning over. And uh, that's how I hope to help change the world. <laughs> that's it. All right, so let's get on to our last story of the day, which is going over this nice little video I talked about a couple days ago. Where it was Voyager? People, it's all over the place. It really is. Uh, I made this video because I've been getting a lot of complaints about Voyager withdrawals and transfers and everything else and uh, wait list and uh, look, growing pains. That's uh, really what it comes down to. And I said that I couldn't recommend Voyager and um, I'll get to that in a second because I feel like there's a lot of things going on. So we've had Steve on the show multiple times. We have an over an Alex Masculi show. I invest in people. I, have, I still don't have any doubts about uh, Voyager and, uh, and Steve. I think they're great. I just think they're going through a lot of growing pains. And uh, I highlighted those in their new user agreement. And just so you know, I mean, I get people on both sides. I mean, people like say, hey, I did a, I did a test. I, I sold two positions on Voyager three days ago, made the same day two withdrawals from my Voyager account to my bank account. And within one day, the withdrawals were processed and completed. And today, just three days after withdrawals, the two amounts received on my bank account. No problems with Voyager. Fantastic. So there's that. And there's also people like, I have problems with Voyager. And that's just how it is. That's in every single company. There's going to be good stuff and bad stuff. And then I get a lot of things like this. Hey, Rob, you think you would have waited the entire 120 days before throwing Voyager under the bus? You're a fair weather phony. Eh. So what he's talking about here is 120 day uh, before throwing Voyager because Steve came on and said, look, we're, we have a 120 day plan. We're going to get, uh, things really updated and we're going to train some more people. Customer service is going to really start to really ramp up and we're, we got it. And he said, this was an Alex show. He's like, we're in 75 days. We got, you know, uh, some more days to go. You know, 95, 115, I'm just quick, my like 45 days. We got like a month and a half to go. And I'm like, okay, you know, like a month and a half. Great. Get everybody up to speed. That's fantastic. So I just wrote back and go, look, should I keep recommending this when the customer service isn't up to uh, full standards? And uh, I should just keep going, go and go and go and push more people, more people, more people into Voyager. And then 
they can't handle it right now uh, or they're ramping up. I'm not saying they can't handle it. I'm saying, you know what, they're ramping up everything. So should I keep pushing, pushing, pushing people into a, into a platform that really uh, just needs a little bit of time to take a breather, a refractory period and get everybody trained up? Why the heck would I do that? So it's the same thing. And uh, that's what I have. So I asked the question, would you tell your family to go in there uh, when these things aren't, uh, you know, going 100%? Maybe just tell them to wait. Maybe tell them like, hey, if you can go in, just know that these things might happen because they're training everybody up. There was a massive influx of people and that's just what it is. So I want to make mention of the user agreement. And before we, we start, I need to make, there's four sections. I need to, to bear, clarify what I said. And first of all, before I even go on, uh, the big question was, Rob, did you sell your Voyager tokens? No. Rob, do you still believe in Voyager? Yes. Rob, what is your price prediction? $30 at end of year. I can't say any clearer than that. All right. So consent to rehypothecate. Customer grants Voyager the right subject to applicable laws with it, without further notice to customer to hold crypto held in customer's account in Voyager's name or another name and to pledge, repledge, hypothecate, rehypothecate, sell land or otherwise transfer or use any amount of such crypto separately or together with other property with all attendant rights of ownership and for any period of time and without retaining a like amount of cryptocurrency and to use or invest such crypto at customer's sole risk. So look, they're selling you, look, you, you, we're going to rent this out. You know, we're, we're going to put this out there and uh, it's at your risk. Now, this is just like legal speak. If you look at the, the uh, disclaimer for batteries, it says batteries may explode, causing skin damage, eye, ir ir irreversible eye repair. You're like, Jesus, <laughs> Are these batteries going to blow up my face? No, but they have to put that, right? Same thing with like your, your hair dryer. It says something stupid like, don't use the hair dryer in the shower because some idiot uses the hair dryer in the shower. They got to put all these things. However, just so you know, this is legal speak and this is what it is. So let's move forward. Two more pieces. The refusal to allow withdrawals. Voyager may refuse to allow US dollar withdrawals, just so you know. And three... It says here, the amount of such withdrawal is equal to or greater than the sum of all deposits made into account within the immediately preceding 60 days. So how that is interpreted to me is, look, if you put in 10,000 bucks and then within 60 days, you're like, I want to take 10,000 bucks out. Like, wait, wait, what? Huh? Or I want to take out 11,000. What? You can't take out more than you put in. So that's the whole 60 day uh, weather time as far as withdrawals. Okay, so they could say no, uh, that's it. So far, I have not had no, I have had lag periods, that is very true. And this has taken five to 10 business days. And some people will say this, well, Rob, dang it, over at XYZ uh, exchange, I get it out in two seconds. Well, great, good for you. Uh, go there. I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. You know, right now, Ooh, there's a little bit more of KYC and AML. If you don't like where you're, where you're at, go someplace else. And uh, that's it. So uh, I got another for you. No leverage, cryptocurrency withdrawals. Uh, this is the big thing. Crypto withdrawals, because we got cash and we got crypto. Um, it says customer may range to withdraw and transfer crypto in the amount, account to an external wallet, of whatever else, right? Customer understands that Voyager may in its sole discretion delay Modify, prohibit uh, any requested withdrawal, including this. So the withdrawal is being attempted within 60 days of a deposit or a cryptocurrency in the account. So within 60 days, they're saying, within 60 days, for whatever, for these reasons, Voyager believes such actions is prudent in order to satisfy anti-money laundering obligations. There's something going on. You didn't get the KYC, the AML, like we're going to hold it for whatever else. This, I think, is uh, one of the big problems about, you know, they have to do some manual uh, checks as they get everything up to speed. People aren't getting their cryptocurrency withdrawn. And they're saying, look, it's, uh, we can hold it for 60 days. That's what it says. Now, are they going to do that for every single person? No, they're not. But are they going to do it for some? Yeah, probably. Especially if uh, there's some things that look a little bit uh, off. Not to say that you're money laundering or whatever else, but I'm just saying that it, it could happen. And uh, look, these, they have to go through it because they're a public company. And finally, I want to finish up with this. So you're like, okay, Rob, well, that makes a lot of sense, right? And everything's good and everything else, right? Here's the thing. 
remember all that if we so we, we talked about getting interest in the, in the last video you know they they're going to give you interest on your cryptocurrency and they're going to loan out things they're going to do they're going to hypothecate re, you know pledge repledge all that stuff but you can opt out however customer may opt out of the interest program at any time by doing so in the app great but just so you know Customer understands and acknowledges that even if the customer opts out of the interest program, customer will remain subject to the term of Section 5, account funding, regulatory treatment. Therefore, even if customer does not participate in the interest program, customer crypto will still be subject to being held by custodians, other custodians, which may be located within the U.S. or in a foreign jurisdiction, held in the Voyager's name or otherwise, or pledged, repledged, hypothecated, sold, loaned, or otherwise transferred at customer's sole risk and in Voyager's sole discretion. So even if you opt out, things could still happen. And that's really what it comes down to. So look, look, look. There's nothing without risk. We're in this cryptocurrency market and it's a pretty risky market, let's just be honest. So if you wanna go down this road, the reason I bring it up is to keep you informed. I know for a fact, you did not read the user agreement. You know why I know? Because nobody reads the user agreement. And I'm just bringing it out to the, to the forefront. So I want to clarify everything I talked about. The 60-day thing, yes, it's in there. Are they going to do it? They could if these KYC and AML things are, 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 are not in effect. You could opt out of the interest program, but they're still going to do all these things. They said it right there. Are they going to do it all the time? I don't know. It's up for them. And then the last thing is that this. I talked about how I can't, recommend Voyager because of all the things that are going on and they're really getting things up to speed. And I'm going to say this, I still can't. I still can't recommend it because right now, why would I recommend something? And they have a more in influx of people. I'm just going to say, look, uh, you can go, you can go in, but I can't just, you know, put it all, all behind me and go, yeah, you should go in right now. And I can recommend them. And now I get a bunch of people going, Hey, you recommended this. And then I get all these, I, I put in a, a, a customer complaint or a, or a chat or a service uh, ticket and I can't get any, any responses and it's been three weeks and you told me it was a great place. I'm not going to recommend that. So uh, you can go to it, do it at your own risk and uh, look around for other things. I've got a great spreadsheet with a bunch of different exchanges and it's all up to you. So now we will revisit this in end of 120 days, and I'll try to get Steve on either this channel or Alex's channel, and we'll go from there. Nothing changes, and nobody gets a pass, and that's just how it is. So, if you've made it this far, really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Give me a thumbs up. That helps tremendously. Consider subscribing, and that's it for today. Thanks so much. See you on the next one.